When Matthew told his mother that he was getting married to June, his mother and sisters busted into a loud laugh. They thought he was joking, but his straight face showed he wasn't. Why won't you leave this wretched girl alone? What do you see in her? His mother asked in a bid to mock him. Matthew was sure his mother and sisters would kick against the idea, but he had already decided. You won't change your mind, will you? His mother asked, but he said nothing. His mother watched him as he wiped his mouth clean and excused himself from the table where they ate together. He dragged June with him. She had been sitting there the whole time, but Matthew's mother did not mind if she hurt her feelings with her words. When they were both out of sight, Matthew's mother, Marilyn, and his two younger sisters burst out into another laugh. They mocked June and Matthew for thinking they could both get married, even with the vast difference in their social background. Before Matthew announced his intent to marry her, his mother never approved of their relationship. She used to tell Matthew to get someone better that deserved him and not some peasant who was only after his money. Being from a vibrant and reputable background, Matthew was the only son of his father, Mr. King, and out of love and happiness for his son's humility, his father willed everything to his name. He left nothing for his mother and daughters apart from their house because he was sure they would squander all of his money on shopping and unimportant things, breaking them in a couple of years. On the other side, June was her shoemaker father's first and only child, Mr. Richard. Her mother died when she was still a baby because her father could afford to pay for the proper treatment after June's birth. Since then, they had been struggling to survive together. Mr. Richard did not have the opportunity to go to school, which is why he worked so hard to ensure June completed her education. He believed that educated people had an advantage in the world over uneducated ones. It was June's dream to go to school, too. She stopped at high school to save up for her fees. She worked in a small coffee shop in London and worked 13 hours daily to meet her financial target. June was a light-skinned girl with honey eyes, blonde hair tumbling over her shoulders, and a beautiful smile that could melt any heart. She was very hard-working, which was visible from how she worked in the coffee job. She knew her father's small, irregular money would not be enough to send her to school. And because of her cheerful and charming personality, she got lots of tips and encouraging remarks from the customers who stopped by the shop from time to time. The first time she met Matthew, he had come to the shop in the company of his friends. She went to them to take their orders when they were settled in and their eyes met. For the first time, she became uncomfortable taking a customer's order. Her lower tummy churned at the sight of him, and everyone at the table could tell she was nervous. Matthew noticed her uneasiness, but he could not tell why. He loved her at first sight, but he tried not to show it. That day, she bumped into another customer and spilled hot coffee on her shirt. She apologized quickly, but the customer was already upset. She said many mean things to her and left. The rest of the day, June refused to come out. Her nice boss, Mr. Rowlings, tried to get her out of her bad mood, but nothing worked until he told her she could take the day off and still get her regular pay. And that was how she left. Maybe if she did not leave work early, she would not have met Matthew again. She met him outside taking a call, and he followed her when she saw her going in the opposite direction. He kept calling for her attention, but she ignored him and hastened her steps. She was already embarrassed by what happened and did not want to look him in the eye. She was just about to cross to the other side of the road when she felt a firm grip on her right arm. It was Matthew. She looked up at his face and the nervousness returned. From then on, they would meet up with each other regularly till they became lovers. As of the time they met, Matthew had just returned from Canada, where he finished a master's degree in business but she was yet to start her tertiary institution. The first time Matthew invited her to meet his mother and sisters, she could barely sleep the night before. She understood they were from different worlds, and her father often told her, the rich will always marry the rich, and the poor will always marry the poor. Not that he discouraged her from being with Matthew, he only wanted her to be realistic about her relationship with him. 
When the day came, she wore the red gown Matthew had gifted her and a pair of black shoes to match. The dinner was set for 7 p.m., but she was already with Matthew by 6 p.m. Everyone could tell she was nervous from the look on her face. Even Matthew occasionally whispered to her, and she would breathe out almost after. Right from the first day, she knew Marilyn and Matthew's sisters would never love her. They teased and mocked her in Matthew's presence till she could no longer take it. Marilyn even asked if she stole the dress she wore because there is no way a low life like her could afford it. That night, when she went home to her shabby old house, she cried herself to sleep. Now there she was, after two years of deliberating if she was ready to marry Matthew and his whole family. She loved Matthew greatly and was not prepared to leave him. He treated her nicely and provided for all her needs. Most importantly, he promised to help sponsor her education at any school of her choice. After giving it much thought, she agreed to marry him and move into their family house. Because of Matthew's nature of business, he was barely at home, and he believed his mother and sister's attitudes would change towards June after marriage. But he was wrong. They only became worse. Whenever he was not around, they would verbally abuse her and subject her to different forms of maltreatment. There's even a time June was sent out of the house and forced to sleep in the horse stable because she spoke back to Clarine, one of Matthew's sisters. That night she cried so much and regretted moving in with them. Other times, Marilyn would order the maids to do nothing, then force June to do all the work. In her own words, June was there for her son's money, so she had to work for it. And because June had no one to stand up for her, she did all the work, cleaned the entire house, and washed all of Marilyn's clothes, even when there was a washing machine. She would go to the market all alone, cook for everyone, including the maids, and by the time she was done having her bath, they must have eaten everything, leaving her to scrap the remains from the bottom of the pot for herself. The most painful of them all was the abusive words Marilyn and her daughter said to her. They should say, she would never amount to anything. She was slum material, and she belonged in the slums, and she would never carry Matthew's child because they did not want her bad blood running in her grandchildren. These hurtful words alone lowered her confidence and esteem. All along, Matthew was barely around. He was always running around from place to place to seal business deals. And every time June spoke with him over the phone, Matthew's mother and sisters would stand behind her to make sure she did not tell on them. With every passing day, she grew leaner and looked more malnourished. Meanwhile, Matthew sent in money weekly for her upkeep through his mother. Marilyn continued to get all the money but she never gave any to June. She told her son June was pregnant and she needed more money to take care of her and the baby in her tummy. As it would turn out, June was pregnant, but nobody knew, not even June herself. Marilyn claimed June was pregnant to get more money for shopping. She no longer made money from any of her businesses because of her excessive spending and lifestyle, and she did not want anyone to know she was bankrupt. She did not want to go below her usual standard of living and she did not want to admit it to her son either. She lied about June being taken care of and how he would be so happy to see her when he returned. This encouraged Matthew to send in more money. The thing about Matthew was that he loved to surprise people. He refused to tell anyone the day he returned to London because he wanted to take them unaware, especially his newly wedded wife, whom he barely spent any time with. June was serving her mother-in-law and sisters-in-law when Matthew walked in like an unexpected visitor. When she saw him, she called his name in excitement, but fainted immediately. While Matthew and his family rushed her to the nearby hospital, Marilyn and his sisters came up with a thousand reasons why she could have fainted, and that was when he suspected something was wrong. But he chose to say nothing until he heard it from the horse's mouth. A couple of hours later, June regained consciousness, and her doctor's report came in too. She was two months pregnant, but unfortunately lost it due to excessive stress and poor feeding. Stress and poor feeding? Matthew raised his voice at the doctor, but the doctor walked away. After the doctor left, he looked closely at June, lying quietly in tears. She looked leaner, tired, unkempt, and pale. She looked better in her father's house than when she moved in with his family. He turned on his mothers and sisters, who all wore uninterested looks. 
from their facial expression, he could gather that they did not care about her, and his mother had been lying about taking care of her. She lied about the money and every other thing. He was also mad at June for not telling him the truth, but after she explained everything, he understood why she couldn't. Matthew decided to move her out of his mother's house at that moment. They relocated to London, where most of his companies were situated. He also hired two maids to care for the home while she rested. Later that year, she took in again, and after nine months, they gave birth to a girl. He also stopped sending money to his mother and sisters. Concerning June's education, she had always wanted to read botany because of her love for nature. Four years after, she earned a degree and continued with her master's degree, after which she got a job in one of the highest-paying pharmaceutical companies, and the last time she saw Matthew's family was at the hospital. Matthew promised she would never see them again. The last time she heard about them, Marilyn had sold their house and squandered all of the money, and how she moved into a one-bedroom apartment where she worked as a cleaner in a hospital. Matthew's sisters tried to beg him a couple of times, stalked him on social media, and even hired a lawyer to sue him for abandoning his family. Instead, Matthew reported them for stalking him, and they were forced to sign an agreement stating that they would never come near him, his family, or his property. This way, he could lead a happy life with his family and daughter. Their daughter, Star, grew up to take after her mother's looks and her father's intelligence, and none of her parents mentioned her wicked grandmother and aunties. Her life was better off without them in it.